Hey guys, and welcome to my channel, Moxie DIY in Java. I'm Michelle. Today's video, we are making some Easter DIYs that will coordinate with a wreath I made in one of my last videos. So be sure to check that out. I'll link it down in the description. But with that, grab your cup of coffee or your favorite beverage and join me. This video is part of the Easter DIY challenge hosted by Heidi Sonbol DIY. I will link both the playlist and her channel in the description box. Thanks for hosting this, Heidi. I just wanted to extend a warm welcome and a thank you for joining me in this video today. For those of you who are my subscribers, hello again. And for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you like what you see, and if you do, please consider subscribing. For this DIY, you will need two packages of the ornament eggs, antiquing wax, paper of your choice, a straight edge, glue, and a sanding sponge. Not pictured, Mod Podge, and hot glue. I had previously painted these with the antiquing wax, and because it is a wax, hot glue does not stick very well to it. So what I'm going to do is put a thin line of Mod Podge where I plan to glue it to give the hot glue something to grab onto when I use it. Now I will show you how to cut the eggs and paper them. You will need six eggs, three cut in half, and three whole for the papered eggs. And for the antique eggs, you will need four eggs and two cut in half with two whole. wood is thin enough that once you score it, you can usually snap it right in half. The paper I'm using is wrapping paper I had on hand. I think it came from the Dollar Tree, possibly Michael's, but I liked it because the background matches the wood color of the eggs. I had previously measured it to fit one whole egg plus one half of an egg. For this wrapping paper, it was nine squares across. To start, you will only glue one side of a whole egg.
You can use either scissors or a straight edge, which is what I will use to cut mine. You want the edge to be as clean as possible because you will be gluing it onto the half of an egg. Now because my wrapping paper is so thin, I don't need a ruler or to press very hard on my blade. The easiest way I have found to get the um, pattern to match up properly is to place the half of an egg over the other half of the whole egg and then lay the paper on top. As you can see, the pattern matches up pretty close. I learned this method from Megan of Glue Guns and Roses. Using the fine grit of your sanding sponge or sanding paper, you're going to angle it downwards and it creates a pretty near perfect edge to the paper and the wood. Now typically I would wait for my glue to completely dry before doing this, but I do need to see my edges in order to complete the project. So I'm just going slow and careful so I don't lift the edge. And see, it's almost perfect. Now we will apply the paper with the same method, but with the half of an egg on the other side and the half of the whole egg on the opposite side. Now we're going to attach the half pieces, but first we need to insert the twine 
into the whole egg. Holding the twine taut, we're going to run a line of hot glue down the middle of the egg. The easiest way I have found to do this is to start your glue and then lift your tip as you draw it down. It creates an almost perfect line. And here is the egg we just finished with the ones I had done previously. Now let's glue together the stained ones. First we will attach the twine in the hole of the whole egg. <laughs> Though the Mod Podge is clear, you can see the line where we applied it, and this is exactly where we're going to apply the hot glue. For this DIY, you will need an egg sign, scrapbook paper, burlap, ribbon of your choice, glue, paper punches, printouts. I found these adorable printouts online and I will be sure to link them in the description box. But what we're going to do is cut them out and paste them onto scrapbook paper. I have chipboard here, but I ended up changing my mind. I chose to go with a Peter Rabbit theme for this Easter, but this would be equally adorable for a baby shower or a nursery. I'm cutting out both the text and the pictures. Here 
you can see the text and the pictures are both glued onto scrapbook paper. I thought this blue matched Peter's jacket. What do you think? I used a one inch punch to make the illustrations into circles. This sign is from Dollar Tree and this stack of burlap sheets I think I got from Joann's. I've had them forever but given how popular burlap is these days it wouldn't surprise me if they still had it. We're going to hot glue one sheet onto the back of this sign. This is a one and a half inch punch. I'm going to use foam tape to attach the pieces. I am cutting about half inch pieces of the blue scrapbook paper and I will be using them to anchor the pieces that I'm going to put onto the egg. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
To cut a dovetail, all you need to do is fold your ribbon in half and then cut at an upward angle towards the sides of the ribbon. These pieces are probably around six to eight inches. Now all I'm doing is pinching these ribbons together and then securing them with a wire, which I will attach to the jute on the sign. Next I will attach these twine carrots that I got from the Dollar Tree to the middle of the bow. Now here's the abridged story of Peter Rabbit on a decor piece. For this DIY, you will need two mini crates, printables, Mod Podge, glue, ribbons of your choice, stickers of your choice, and hot glue. These are the same printables we used in the previous craft.
I borrowed this book from my son so I could spell the names correctly. When I have a specific space where I need to add stickers, I always start from the end and work my way to the beginning of the name or word, just so I have my spacing correct and so that I know I have enough space to have the entire word on there. Here I'm just cutting this printable so it looks like he is on individual books rather than glued onto a crate. Now I'm going to age these by dipping my paper towel into white paint and gently dabbing all over. This will put just a very light coat of paint but because of the paper towel and the dabbing motions, it creates a texture to the project. These are some leftover stickers I got from Target a few years ago, and I realized this exclamation mark looked like the perfect carrot. Now I'm just cutting a length of ribbon that is slightly longer than the stacked crates so I can fold it underneath slightly. To finish it off, I just made a shoelace bow out of the top ribbon. For this DIY, you will need coasters, printables, Mod Podge, Triple Thick, and paint. I'm giving these coasters a coat of white paint to cover up the words. It ended up taking two coats.
These are the same printables we've been using for all the other crafts. Once these have dried completely, we're going to seal it. I personally am not a fan of using Mod Podge to do that because it always has a bit of a stick to it. So I prefer to use Triple Thick. I did recently get this Rust-Oleum Never Wet. I've never tried it before, but for this project, I used Triple Thick. I'm so grateful that you spent this time with me today and I hope that you enjoyed watching these projects. If you make any of them, please tag me on either Instagram or direct message me. I would love to see them. And until I see you in the next video, take care.